Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to bring you a series of matches between Top Ramen and Taco Cake. This is going to be a best of five, and I am informed that even though we only have four replays, that's just because I haven't played the fifth game yet, but I don't know if that means it's a two to two, or if that means that it's like, oh, they're going to play a five game series and somebody might win out more than that, earlier than that. You know how this stuff goes sometimes, but this is Cosmonarchy. It's not your normal StarCraft. It's not your average StarCraft game. We're going to be going to Axiom by Biddy B for our very first map. And indeed, Top Ramen as Terran, Taco Cake as Zerg. They're both kind of new to the project. Let's get into it, man. I'm always excited to bring you guys new cutting edge players for Cosmonarchy because it seems like just a privilege that we'll even have new players for this game, for this strange world that we've carved out and shaped within the bones of Brood War. This is not your average StarCraft indeed. You can see Top Ramen over here in the top right is already harvesting Vespines straight from the source. And down here in the bottom left is Taco Cake, who is, you know, as most Zergs do, they're going to go ahead and elect to avoid gas for the early stages of the game. I say most, but not all, because one of the things you can do as the Zerg, if you want to go the D-Gen strat that Jackie Lansky has been pioneering, another re relatively recent, uh, I guess you could say, cohort that has joined us, uh, one of the things that he likes to do sometimes is harvest gas, get an Ovaleth, or formerly Overlord, and then transport his static defense over here, and then take a hatch underneath it. So, uh, delaying his military tech, but getting a faster economy online, faster uh, macro situation online. Top Ramen is going to go ahead and drop a stockade at his ramp. The gas is, as a result, exposed as being for a quarry add-on, which is going to allow him to double his worker production rate. So Top Ramen will have less military available to him uh, than uh, what Taco Cake will eventually scale up to. He's going to go ahead and grab the hatch at the ramp. The significance of this, so there's there's like three different openers that I've seen so far emerge as dominant ones. That D-Gen Zerg idea is not, not really that common. It's very uncommon, actually. Uh, and, you know, there's also things like a, a six pool or a seven pool. I think seven pool is probably the most common uh, variant of that. Uh, but those are all like, you know, cheeses or, or just like wrinkles you can put in that are very different than what you would normally expect. Uh, as Top Robin comes up in here and sees that there's a pool, this is a pretty common situation here. The worker just getting a little bit of harassment in back at the... Uh, Terran base. So, Hatch at the Ramp gives you a very secure opener. You're, you can't be rushed uh, because you get cliff advantage in Cosmonarchy. So, standing at this ramp with ranged units means that you've got plus two weapon range firing down the ramp and firing up here as well. You know, if you station your units over here, they're going to have plus two range down on the low ground. That's just the way that it works in the game. So, that gives you much better defender's advantage than just a coin flip as to whether or not the attacks miss. It's also a lot more consistent. So, we removed that RNG, we replaced it with an actual mechanic. I think that's just generally better. Uh, obviously, my bias showing a little bit there because I'm calling it an actual mechanic instead of RNG, which I don't really view as a mechanic, but technically it is a mechanic. You guys know what I mean. What? Whatever. Whatever. Uh, this is one of the openers. You go hatch and then pool. Uh, you can also go low ground hatch into pool. And what that does is it gives you a little bit faster gas timing. So usually you'd see that with people who are trying to go for a fast hydrath then, or maybe they're trying to evolve their pool into a pond, which is the next evolution up, and that will enable uh, fast Vorv timing if you wanted to evolve your uh, Zethracors, your formerly known as Zerglings, uh, or if you wanted to go for fast Flyers. That's another thing you can do. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. But Taco Cake has made the compulsory three pairs of Quasilisks. Each one of these uh, comes out two per egg. And now is just working on uh, just adding more Droleths to the picture, and soon he will be dropping his hatch on the low ground. It's a little bit out of sync, but Otherwise, fairly textbook. Gonna go ahead and add a Kagrant on the high ground. This, when it's uh, mutated into the circuit, will probably attack till about here. So, very, very useful position. Um, obviously, one of the things we've been doing lately, uh, we do have a, a bit of a bio move out here from uh, Top Ramen. We'll see what he can get done with the two stockade opener. But you can see he's got way less military units than you would traditionally have at this time because he went for that fast quarry, but he has a very significant worker advantage. So, this isn't even a circuit yet. And uh, unfortunately for our boy Taco Cake, he's. Uh, his units were on hold position, so he didn't end, or I think they were on a follow or something. You know, you right click your units onto each other and they, they turn into a follow. Uh, that ended up happening there. So there's a little bit of pressure. This is actually accomplishing more than I thought it would. But you can still shark on in here. Stimpak in Cosmonarchy has a one and a half second delay before it kicks into effect, but it only deals five damage instead of 10. Uh, and obviously Mavericks have more health. So that is definitely going to help out there. 
And when the, oh, unfortunately that uh, Maverick is gonna die to the circus. So you can see, that's what I'm talking about, right? The weapon range preview only shows that so far. So it's about here that they that the circus can attack to. A little bit less than I thought, but still pretty good for general coverage. You can, it really uh, funnels the reinforcement path there. So Top Robin is gonna have to figure out where he wants to go next. Uh, with his build order, he's adding a Vestry add-on. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but yeah, having the low ground here is now going to be given over to Taco Cake. So uh, that hatch at the ramp has given him some nice safety. The Unfortunately, those two Mavericks did not turn tail. So an anchor is now being set up. Now, anchors can be busted by Quasilisks. They have one armor pen, and anchors only have one armor. It's their health pool that can be difficult for them to chip through, but with enough of them, they can do it. And since it's not even going to be done in time... I feel like Taco Cake has a chance to make something happen, but he might be tempted to wait for this second group of reinforcements. Again, massive worker lead for our Terran player. No stim pack, no loading in just yet. Okay, now he's going to go for it, apparently. I think I think what might have happened for Taco there is he might have thought, oh shit, there's a lot of units in there inside the anchor, but actually there weren't any yet. However, of course, it eventually it would happen, right? Now the second crew, second squad of quasis is uh, sitting up here. Got another quarry adding on. It's a lot of Vespian, a lot of resources put in. Now, unfortunately for Taco, he kind of just... This is a very disjointed attack initially, but he is going to come in and surge forward. The Hurakans absorbing a lot of the early shots and dealing some nice uh, spread damage there. So they're doing their job. Throwing bodies at the problem right now is Top Ramen. That's that's what you do with your uh, when you're thinking about playing a, a bio build. He's going to go ahead and stim forward with his couple Mavericks, pick off some of the units at the extremities. Back at the Taco Cake base... He's started to get a pretty good situation for himself. I, I'm looking at the hatch count, and we only we only have four right now. No uh, third base on the way yet. And he's been pretty light on the resources as well, uh, only making the one worker right now. So he's going to want to think about doing that a little bit more. Get them, get them drolls up. Got the Hydra Thin coming. He's banked a lot of money, and uh, so has a, a Top Ramen. But don't be fooled, because that actually is there for the Atlas, and the Atlas is 600 of each resource, so very uh, costly structure. But he's going to be going up to Tier 2 off the back of just two stockades. It feels very like a, a, a decided push with Zeths, Vorvs, Quasis could absolutely, uh, you know, just stamp this out. Uh, and a Hydra then could also do the same thing. So we're going to get a... We, we did get a another hatch. Uh, in the main. He's going to stay on two bases for now, our Zerg player. And he made a bunch of Quasis and Zeths. I think he'll be okay. You can see the preemptive stims here from Top Robin. He is going to go ahead and charge on, use that range advantage to engage the Quasis initially. And uh, he's got to watch out for that Circuit. It's just going to keep on laying in the, the hurt. There's another one down here as well. And so I think Taco Cake is just fine. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but there's birds in the background. It doesn't everybody love birds. So here's something curious. The Atlas is nearly complete, but a lot of Top Ramen's money has been put into additional production at Tier 1. He's getting a Star Pad for Anseals, most likely. Maybe drops as well. Uh, he's getting his Fulcrum. That's going to be for a Palladium add-on, most likely. We do have a bit of a Quasilisk drop attempted. And actually, this I was going to say this is probably not going to be too effective, but he's got to unload the Anchor. And with six Quasis, you can beat four Mavericks every day of the week. So this is actually going to incur a good amount of damage in Top Ramen. Suddenly, in a bit of a uh, painful situation, he's got five more Quasis to reinforce. Brilliant move coming out of Taco Cake. Now, we can see the, <laughs> the focus of our players is all in on this uh, military operation here. And they're floating a lot of money as a result. They are not at all looking at their bases. Well, I guess technically that's not true. Uh, uh, Top Robin is looking at his base. Uh, and only now he's like realizing, oh yeah, I should probably queue up some stuff. Uh, so he's got two Mavericks on the stem. He's going to go ahead and kite backwards. A couple of these are very low, so he could actually make a couple picks. Here comes the rest of the army and some more reinforcements as well that are going to turn and fight. So this force will be cleaned up. And Top Robin still maintains a worker advantage, but the tempo is all taco cakes. And now you can see the, the production menu lighting back up uh, with all of, the, uh, all of the attention back on the field. I think um, really what, what it comes down to is drops can be so disruptive. They feel like they are the most disruptive thing you can do to your opponent if you can get in there. Instantaneously, we do have uh, Taco Cake uh, just throwing down another hatch, this time at his third. He's going to think about taking six o'clock as well. I feel like some players will get into this behavior, right? That's an Iral Iris at the front line of the natural. I'm not sure about the placement on that, but tier two is on the way for our Zerg player as well. Uh, yeah, you can use drops to really send your opponent off guard and be like, oh... I have to spend all my attention trying to work on this. And 
you know, admittedly, trying to work on it is a good idea, but th that's a brilliant little wrinkle there for the one Ovaleth. People have been building at least one Ovaleth in the uh, early stages of the game for scouting, and the fact that it, if it survives, which it often does, uh, it can be used for transport for elevator plays like that. I mean, so much so much damage. Uh, Taco Cake is behind in workers still, but he's caught up a little bit, and he will be going up to uh, four bases. Now, it, this is the other part, right? If you've been on two bases for a long time and then you explode onto four, that can be good, but do you have the APM to be able to manage staffing both of those bases? Admittedly, it's a lot easier for Zerg, uh, but you, you, you'll be without any military units for that little stretch of time. And uh, it, are you gonna be able to do all of that and still be on the map? This watchdog here was probably not just to uh, block the position, but it was probably also to eventually lift off and scout inside the Zerg base. Matrable Nest coming, so tier two starting to get actuated for our Zerg player. Obviously the captaincies are the source of uh, Top Ramen's tier two. I do like this double watchdog and the one Cyclops. If it's gonna be like an air stack, then the Cyclops can be a little bit deadly, but the watchdogs will take the initial aggro. We've got a move out for both players. It's a bio ball. It's the, the ant seals over here. And Taco Cake, meanwhile, looking pretty scary with all these Azira cores. Doesn't have the greatest of back lines. Uh, you gotta watch out though. I mean, the ant seals, so they have this protective bubble over them that uses their energy as an additional health bar, and it shields incoming attacks on units that the ant seal is hovering over as well. A very small radius, but basically you can hover over things like the mavericks and stuff and block the damage. Uh, it doesn't affect splash damage though. So, you know, the Kizilisk spines, lurker spines, right? Um, phalanx shots, we do have a phalanx coming for top ramen, so he's gotta watch out for the friendly fire there. All that stuff is still gonna go straight on through. Now again, six o'clock is done. Uh, this base must have gotten, oh no, this base has never gotten taken. That was a watchdog, which has lifted off and will be flying in just to see what's going on. We got the gas heart being harvested here for Taco Cake at the third. And that seems to be all he's interested in getting so far. Now the phalanx on the front line and then deploying on the front line. I'm not sure I agree with that one. It's only gonna get the one shot. The Anseals could have maybe saved it, but we're a little bit too slow. And everybody else is gonna move on in for the group photo. But hey, those Anseals are gonna add a lot of anti-burst and the clerics sustaining themselves on the front line. Remember, I said it earlier, I, I thought the front line was scary for Taco Cake, but let's let's be honest, the, the Matrolots weren't there in the fight. They, they hit a, the fight happened just a little bit too soon because all those corpses could have been really rogue cores, could have added a little bit more uh, meat chaff to the front line. Uh, but the back line is really where it was lacking, right? I think it was only something like six or seven Hydras, uh, which is not gonna be enough to deal with that kind of uh, burst protection from the Ant Seals. Uh, and uh, I mean, it will eventually, I suppose, if you have a, a persistent enough front line. We saw Vilgora cores as well. I'm not really, okay, they're right over here. Uh, when those take damage, they release a small Carapace Swarm that will absorb a little bit of damage. You can see the, re the redirection happening over here. It's trying to hit the Maverick, and instead it gets uh, redirected to the Ant Seal. Uh, but uh, Taco Geek it can maybe think about doing a little bit of a counter attack here. Uh, he is gonna go ahead and charge forward, try to use his static defense as initial options. Uh, of course, all of his front line is getting a little bit caught up over here off to the side and not really being able to path through thanks to this very fat Vilgorakor. So that feels a little bit bad, but at the very least the splash damage proc a couple of Carapace Swarms. Now, Taco Cake is, uh, th there's a really strong potential chance he just gets farmed here. He's got 18 Hydras on the way, but that is not the crowd control he needs. Only now going for that swamp upgrade to the den and that is because he needs the Bactalusk very, very desperately here. He made the Nest, he made the Matrolets, he made the Vilgorakors. He didn't make any Convalisks, which have a little bit of crowd control as options. He's getting more hatches back here. And, uh, well, Top Ramen's gonna take a little bit of a slow and steady approach in this best of five, wanting to take the opening. I didn't get the map veto. I don't know if there was a map veto or if they were just gonna hang it, hang it out uh, later. Maybe uh, somebody can DM me the map veto later. We will find out. Very, very powerful position here, this little spoke out. But when you come on down here, the cliff advantage, remember I talked about it at the beginning of the cast, that can be pretty tricky. Top Ramen, gonna go ahead and take his uh, fourth base. Technically, this 12 o'clock was his third. That's an unconventional third on this map. He's stimming his Mavericks forward. He's got the Madcaps as well for heavier firepower. And uh, yeah, you can see there's just not really any way to, to make connections over here. The rally point not working out initially here for Taco Cake. He's gonna charge in again. He's got a lot of Hydras, remember, but Oh my goodness, the Phalanx shots are all, these are the heavy hitters right here. They've already dealt a lot of damage, over 3,000 damage in those three Phalanxes alone. And GG has to be called. The, the Bactalisks didn't come out in time. The tech did not come out in time. Top Ramen, he was able to hold on for dear life after that drop. And I think a lot of that comes down to the macro, comes down to the worker count, right? It's funny because back in the day, uh, maybe a month ago, uh, there we, we had a new guy on the block, Akko, who, uh, checked out the project for the first time. And he one of the things he said was, you know, it seems like whoever has the more workers at any given time will end up winning. Uh, and I feel like 
that did come true this time around where Top Ramen had a worker advantage for a very long period of time, but they were kind of fully saturated on two bases. The problem is that Taco Cake as Zerg had a lot of tempo, but didn't actuate it in that game, didn't really use it. He established those bases, but again, he didn't really have the APM to keep them staffed. And then he built a really good front line, which a lot of Zergs actually fail to do. The problem is what they don't fail to do is build the back line. They get the back line maybe first or maybe in, in uh, awkward quantities compared to the front line and the front line falls and the back line ends up getting annihilated as a result by splash or sustained fire. Uh, but he didn't have a back line. And so, I did feel like maybe that was a pretty big issue there. He's probably looking at the way that maybe Neblim fights Newt or something like that. And he's thinking, okay, the way to defeat Terran is to go for a Matraval Nest. But actually you can go for many different options. I think uh, earlier Bactalisks wouldn't have hurt. Uh, maybe if he went for that before going for anything else. Uh, technically you can get that at tier one, but it's a bit more expensive to then also go to the swamp after. So anyway, those are details. But I do think that Taco Cake had a little bit more in him there. Uh, but Top Ramen was able to Put him out to pasture for game number one. So, hey, let's see what happens in game number two. We are getting into game number two. Taco Cake in the bottom left. Top Robin in the top right. Derelict by Biddy B. And Taco Cake, my man. How's he done this? Switched on over, popped in, said, all right, I'll do a best of five here because my man, the Beaver 99, isn't around to play the qualification match, so we're gonna reschedule that for later on in the day, and I'm just gonna play against this guy instead. Well, Top Ramen, man, he's getting some good reps in, I'll say that much. He's getting some good reps in for sure. He's actually against a Protoss player in General Anakin for qualification. That's going on later today on the day of recording. Uh, and I'm very excited about how, if you look at it, right, so, uh, the, just for anybody who hasn't been following along, but Cosmonarchy does have regular tournaments, and Acropolis number one, uh, which is the, basically, I, I, every season I'm going to change the title of the uh, uh, of the tournaments, I think. Uh, or maybe we'll keep Acropolis, but uh, for now, that's my plan, right? We had Ascension last year, we got Acropolis now. They're always A's for now. That, that's a trend of two. A low ground hatch from Taco Cake going for that expansion first. Interesting. We'll see if he does something with the gas or if he just wants the, uh, just wants the faster oomph. Uh, but yeah, uh, Top Ramen, Taco Cake, General Anakin, and the Beaver 99. Those four are in contention in a uh, in the upper qualification bouts as we speak right now. And while I think Top Ramen stands a pretty good chance at pushing on through, I wonder how good his versus Protoss has been. Haven't been able to check out a set of games between him and Ecalypso, who's another new guy. Unfortunately, couldn't make it to the, uh, the qualifier. He didn't know about it, or he found out about the project a little bit too late, but he seems like a really cool player, so... Definitely interested in uh, putting some casted videos of him on the channel. Uh, but definitely take a look at Top Ramen. Take a look at Taco Cake. These guys are new. And if you think about it, the Beaver 99, the only returning guy from a previous tournament to make it to qualification. Really, uh, that's a storyline I'd love to hint on a little bit later on. We do have the quarry out. First stockade. Nothing else going. So Top Ramen electing for yet again a general lack of pressure. Now, he might feel a little bit more empowered to do something. Because, you know, his Mason is still here in a pretty good spot. It's going to confirm Scout. We've got, we've got the three pairs of Quasis hatching and a Kagrant very defensively here. Uh, very, very far back Kagrant. Unlikely to be too useful in the grand scheme of things. So, uh, you know, you can just walk right past it to get to this. I guess you, you will take a little bit of damage, but that's probably about it. On Derelict 2, the update to this map, this overhang isn't here. Uh, but because it is here, uh, Top Ramen has to be somewhat careful. Uh, I don't th know if he spotted that there's a Kagrant made here, but if so, he should feel really good. Because you, you force the default three Quasis. You can kind of think about this as like the Terran Bio in StarCraft 1 versus Zerg, trying to force out like the Sunkins and stuff, uh, and you, you move forward at the right time. I say Bio, but really it's like, a, usually it's a lot of uh, Marine moveouts. They're called Mavericks in this, because we have better names. At least different names. You can at least say they're different names. We can agree that they're different. Uh, insert... Is Thrathaleth here, uh, but <laughs> I do think that the 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 cool thing about uh, in in Cosmonarchy is that we're kind of seeing some of the same things happen in StarCraft One uh, in this. So you still have the idea that you know you got to make your three quasis, you know, three pairs of quasis. Uh, you could he could have maybe gotten away with two there, and maybe got away with not making the circuit. But it, it's a risk. He doesn't know. Um, he did scout, so he had a little bit of an idea. Fast Treasury here, and a Vestry on the follow-up. So Top Robin sticking to his guns. This is what worked for him in the previous game. He's just going to stick to the uh, economic side. We do have an Obelith nearly about to hatch for Taco Cake, and he's looking for another hatch in his main. And yeah, just uh, pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff.
Now this is not, I should mention, this is not a qualification series. I mentioned that those are best of fives, just like this one. This is just like a show match, basically. Like they decided to play and they got four games in and then I guess one of them had to bail. Uh, but they're going to play the fifth one later. Or maybe that's a cover story. I don't know. Quasilisks are on their way in a drop. That was really, really good from Taco Cake earlier. The problem is we saw that the lack of focus was there. Both players floating almost 2K minerals and 1K gas. Uh, and Taco Cake immediately jumping up to tier two in a, a fast manner. His uh, building placement was not punished. So there is that. Okay, so here's another thing, right? On Derelict, oh, actually, I think maybe that Mason would have seen in the flight path. I wasn't paying attention. But I don't know if Top Ramen was either, because if he did see it, he doesn't uh, seem to have reacted to it. That's something that you guys, you'll have the benefit of rewinding the YouTube video. I do not have that benefit. Imagine if I could rewind life. They made a really shitty Adam Sandler movie about that. And I guess calling it an Adam Sandler movie and really shitty is uh, repeating myself. But you guys know what's up. There was like two good movies that featured Adam Sandler, but they featured him as opposed to being Adam Sandler movies, if you know what I mean. There's like the cobbler or something. <laughs> There's something where he's a shoe guy. I haven't seen that. People tell me it's good. I just trust some people about film and then I actually watch the films and then I'm like, why do I trust you about film? This is really bad timing for Top Ramen because these quasis are unloading. The classic staggered unload. And there's only Harakans here, fresh off the stockade. Hey, honestly, they uh, are going to be able to clear two of the quasis. So that's really big at reducing the DPS. Here comes the push on this side, though. What, is, what does Taco Cake have? He's got some Hydras coming down, including one that decides to fare the flames. All right. Listen, this is working out so far, but doing a great job. Taco Cake hitting a lot of the uh, armor penetration that Top Ramen had in that situation. And back at home, he has wiped this, cleared the deck. He hasn't lost that many workers, but he will need to transfer them back. Some worker time lost. Not really much scary stuff going on here. That Avaloth can come back up and scoop up these Kagrants and move them into better positions. And it's all Mass Hydra from here. Taco K could answer back. He could just move across the map right now, actually. He'd be in a really scary position to end the game. Top Ramen, he's going to go ahead and make sure that doesn't happen again by dropping a Watchdog. He's putting one down here as well to... Uh, float into the base to see what his opponent has. Doesn't look like uh, Taco Cake wanted to do the micro with the Avaloth. You can kind of queue that up. You can load it up and then unload it and, and kind of do that. So that's pretty slick, actually. Um, you can, even before you've actually loaded a unit into a transport, you can queue up the unload command. It's, I think that is a nice thing. I think uh, Fagudo was the one to initially suggest that. It was one of our, one of our longest time, longest uh, running community members here. Uh, this is not looking good for Top Robin. He has no uh, mech switch out. His stockades were idle for a very critical moment there. Although they did just finish uh, another set. but uh, And, uh, you know, only one cleric has to patch up all of these stim-addled lunatics. Worker count still favoring Top Ramen, but military count, not so much. And he didn't get a complete scout, but he probably saw the ski backs being made. And it's Bactylisks. Beautiful adaptation here for Taco Cake. Okay, getting those Bactylisks out sooner. He knows the bio uh, are going to have to deal with that. And so any Zergs out there who struggle versus Terran bio, this might be a good little template to see. Uh, the drops are pretty good. Atlas on the way. So yeah, we basically know Top Ramen has to hold this with not a great composition versus it because he has no Harakans to try to neutralize the range. And he has no real way to gap close onto the Hydras in the first place. He has no drops to do it. He has no Anseals for anti-burst. He only has Clerics and only two of them. So he's going to charge in here and see the Bactylisks. He should know that he's in uh, some deep doo-doo. Then the Avaloth gets alive with one HP. Meanwhile, the, uh, well, 20 HP, but you guys know what I mean. And then the Hydras are free to roam into the, the map. He's actually trying to nip this in the bud before anything crazy happens. Uh, but this is where the dive comes in, and the treasury is just going to get focused down almost immediately. Shades of the Terran tutorial coming to life here. That's what I'm seeing, anyway. And, of course, the Hydras, the Bactylisks. They're not in the best of positions now, but the front line is not going to be required. Only two Bactylisks remaining. Some of them getting caught up in the quarry. That's making Top Ramen's fight a little bit more possible. But he's lost the worker advantage. His tier two is about to finish, but he has no units left. And these five Mavericks are not going to be enough to stand up against all the Hydras and all of the Bactylisks. GG's are called. And we are tied up one for one. Hey, maybe they really do need to get to that uh, final game, huh? Now, with that being said, I am happy to report that... Taco Cake and uh, Top Ramen will most likely qualify to the Battleman stage. I'm very much looking forward to seeing uh, more from them, more play from them. And uh, I, I also want to say that 
it's really cool. It's been really heartwarming and awesome to see uh, just more play from the, the from the people in general in the game. You know, Neblime is a grinder. He has probably played like I don't know. I don't know how many hours in the last week. But you know, you, on uh, in my Counter Strike analysis and stuff, sometimes I'll go into like how many hours on Steam certain players have in the last two weeks or whatever. And you know, like I feel like Neblime uh, or sorry Neblime would be. Uh, the kind of guy to top the charts in that respect. He just plays so much. And as part of what he does, he streams his POV in Discord, in the bullying corner, for anybody to come in and watch. And he's on in like morning time-ish most of the days uh, for us uh, Americans. And it's like, I don't know what time it is anywhere else. He's an Aussie, so his time zones are weird. But if you're ever like heating up the coffee and you're like, huh, I wonder if who's playing Cosmonarchy and you're, you know, it's too early for the, the daily VOD to be released on this channel, or it's uh, after you've already watched that or something, just pop into the Discord server, see if he's running it, see if he's gunning it. Could very well be the case that he's playing right now. So thank you guys for checking this video out and checking out Cosmonarchy in general. And we'll be back for more games between Taco Cake and Top Ramen uh, after a little bit of a break. So see you guys soon.